A super typhoon Haiyan is set to make landfall on Friday. Thousands of people have already been evacuated. But as the storm blazes across the Philippines, it is expected to affect millions. In Haiyan, it couldn't come at a worse time. Parts of the Philippines are still recovering from last month's devastating earthquake. Now, Andrew Stevens is in Tacloban City. He has more for us now. He joins us live. And Andrew, this, again, it's the most powerful typhoon of the year so far. Is the Philippines fully prepared for the storm? The president of the Philippines has just been on national television, Christy, which is a highly unusual event to talk about the preparations that have been made and about the fact that the government stands ready to help the people in this area when the storm hits and, of course, in the aftermath. It's very difficult to gauge whether enough has been done. Uh, the civil defence is saying they've moved about 4,000 people from the low-lying areas and from the areas which are susceptible to landslides. But this area I'm in, in Lete, has about one and a half million people. And this, and I can't uh, overstate the severity of this storm. CNN's uh, storm watcher, James Reynolds, he's with us here at the moment. He said, looking at the satellite pictures, he has not seen anything like this system in terms of intensity and in terms of power. Now, what we've been hearing is that winds could gust up to 300, 325 kilometres an hour. That's 200 miles an hour, Christy, coming ashore around about where I'm standing at the moment in about eight hours from now. And accompanying that, of course, will be a massive storm surge. We don't know how big that will be and heavy rain. And that's the rain which is going to loosen the, hill, the hillsides, which leads to potential landslides. And that was the, uh, the catalyst for so many deaths in a storm here, as you mentioned uh, just a few weeks ago, and also a similar sized storm here last year. Yeah, and very soon you and the team have to move definitely away from the coastline where you are now. Andrew, could you also tell us about the vulnerability of the survivors of that earthquake? That was a 7.3 magnitude earthquake. It took place there last month because now, and many of them are homeless and tense, they now have to face down this storm, this super typhoon. That's right. Uh, tens of thousands of people are being reported to still be living in, in tents. And th this, uh, this, this was an earthquake which uh, struck this region uh, only a few weeks ago. Those people, as you point out, are very, very vulnerable, uh, particularly to, uh, to, to, to the torrential rains and also the, the, the incredibly strong winds that are going to hit here. The government says that it's done what it can. It says that uh, the preparations are really well, they're calling them, they're not saying it's adequate, but they're not saying more is needed to be done either. These people, along with the people along this low-lying coastal area, just flying in tonight, Christy, <clears throat> all along this area, there's light twinkling along the foreshore. People are still living there. They haven't moved there. Uh, again, James Reynolds, he has uh, done a recce around this area, and he said there are so many people here now just sitting, waiting for the storm to hit. They are so close to the water's front, and with a massive storm surge, plus these incredibly strong winds, uh, you have to wonder just how they are going to survive this.